Yeah, hello everyone. In this tutorial, we are building a spline relax solver to achieve this kind of effect. This is something that I did a while ago in Houdini, and I thought maybe it is possible to do um, it in uh, cinema with C notes. Um, it's quite a complex tutorial, so it's more maybe for advanced people, but I try as good as I can to explain it. So we are starting first with some explanations and then we have kind of three parts where we are building the, the solver. Okay, let's go. Okay, here you can see the idea behind this uh, algorithm, behind this method. So um, we are starting with an in initial spline. And second, we are resampling the spline um, depending on a defined point size. Um, then next, what we have to do is to define a relaxed point size. So the relaxed point size is a bit bigger than the initial point size. So when we define a new point size, we, we get some overlaps. And what we can do now is to relax those points, so the points shift around and we get this kind of curvy new spline. So, and what we do then is kind of uh, the repetition of everything. So we resample it again. So when we do this again and again, we achieve this effect. And this here is the setup that we are building. So we are starting with the initial spline. Then we are building a solver with three parts inside. The first part will be the resampling of the spline. The second part will be the relaxing of the points. And also there we decide which point uh, we are, we are like to relax and which not. We are do, doing this on, um, with a collision geometry. And in the third part, we are making a projection. So we are project the points onto a surface. And after that, we are get our final, um, uh, our relaxed um, new spline. And this spline goes back to the start here. So we are solving on each frame the new spline. And that's the whole setup that we are building. So the final setup will look like this. So let's play it. So you can see get this kind of curly snake movement and uh, we project this onto this mountain and uh, here the geometry of the number three let me pause it the geometry of the number three will be our collision geometry where we decide the points they, they have to stop um, relaxing so we get yeah this kind of effect here this will be the setup. So our solver, it looks a bit complex, but we uh, break it apart into three parts. So, and then here at the end, um, we have uh, our sweeping of the line. And this we will do at the end of the tutorial. Okay, I think we can start now. So first what we need is a spline. So let's paint a spline here with the sketch tool. Um, do it in the top view. So the spline is flat. So just maybe paint an S. Now, and this here is our initial spline. So we drag it here into our C note context. And then what we need is also um, two parameters. So we do this here with the value node. One will be our normal point size. And one will be our relax point size. So um, we first we have to check how big is our scene. So our S here is around 300 centimeter. So we are, I think we can start here with a value of 10 and then the relax point size has to be slight bit bigger. So maybe 
for the start. And now what we need now is our solver. The solver is called memory. It's the memory node. And here um, we need the initial spline. It's, it's called initial. And then the next, this will be our final spline. At the moment, uh, it is a vector. So, but we like to have a geometry object. So switch it to geometry. And then we go here under op and feed in our geometry here to the initial one. And then we can dive in to the, mem uh, to the solver. Um, the first part is the resampling. So to resample our spline, there is a node called evaluate, evaluate spline. And the node needs the geometry, so our initial geometry. And then we have an um, evaluation parameter from 0 to uh, 100%. So here we can decide the position on the spline. So here's the start point, here's the end point. So this is 100%, this is 0%. To resample the spline, we first need some information. So we need the the length of our spline, there is a node called length, yeah, here, spline length. Now we have here the information of the length of our spline. And what we need next is the point size. So we go back here and feed in the point size and also for later then the relax point size. So let's call them here, point size and relax size. And let's go back. So first thing we have to do is to divide the length with our point size. Divide, feed in the length and the point size. And next we need a uh, range node. So we have to uh, decide the, uh, how much points are on our new resampled spline. So, and here the end will be um, our result here. So, but first we switch here the divide node to integer because this is an integer value. It is in here and now we have a range um, from zero to how much point we have on our resampled spline. To get a uh, percentage value here um, for every point, we um, have to divide this first here. Another divide, then we have to divide the range with uh, here the points, but first we have to sub subtract one point. Oops, subtract. Also integer, this one has to be float, this is okay. Then feed in here into the input two. And then the result here to the evaluate parameters. And now we have here all the positions of the, of the new points of our resample spline. To collect all points inside of an array, whoops, we can use an, oops, a sample collection. So here we can feed in our points and then it collects those uh, um, and builds an array. But first we have to um, decide the data type here. Um, needs to know that, is an, that it is an array with uh, vectors inside. So a uh, simple way to do this is just to make a, a build node. And then we say, okay, the build node is an array with vectors. We don't need those. And feed this into the data type. We can hide those 
and now the assemb assembly collection here knows now, okay, I am an array with vectors and here the values, you see it, it turns purple. Um, you can feed in the positions here. And now we have here our final array. Um, and to build a spline again, we can use our good old friend, the uh, assembly spline here, feed in the points. And now we have our new geometry. We can feed this here into the output. And now let's check if it worked. So let's go back. Then first we can put here our next straight into the children, here the children uh, output of the scene root. And you can see it resampled our spline. So uh, you can see we have one problem here. The points are not um, evenly distributed. So um, that's an easy fix. Let's go back here into the memory solver and then go to the evaluate spline and check uniform. And now we have a resampled spline here with even these distributed points. So now um, in the second part, we have to relax the points. First hide the original spline. Relax points. Um, here we can feed in our points and now we have to decide the minimum separation and this is our relaxed point size. And now we are getting not points, we are getting uh, matrices. So we have, first we have to extract our point position uh, um, out of the matrices. So we can do this with a iterate collection. So we iterate over the matrix, uh, matrix array and we can open here the elements. And now we see here translation, these are our relaxed positions. And now we have to assemble them again inside of a uh, new array. We also have to decide the type. So the type is the same here. So we can use here the type, feed in the type to the data type. And now the translation positions into the values. And now here we have our array with the relaxed points. So feed this into our assembly spline. And you already see they start to move around. And that's it. So for the relax point part, so we can now press play and the point start to, to relax. Okay, the second part here of the relaxing um, part, uh, uh, we like to decide the collision of the point. So I already built here a collision geometry. Um, just here the number three with some walls and I painted the new spline here. So it is inside of the number three and feed it the new spline here into our uh, initial um, classic object. So first what we have to do, let's dive in back to the memory node and put the collision inside here. And then here we have the geometry. And now we have to decide is the point colliding or not. So we can do this with a node called closest point on surface. So here it needs an object. So we feed in our object and then the position. So the position are um, our final points. So this one, so it builds a iterate collection. So it iterates over all the points. And now the maximum distance has to be the point size. So now um, we have to measure the 
distance between the initial point and the closest point on the surface. So let you can do this with a distance node, distance within first vector, first position, and then the position of the closest point on the surface. And here we have now an, a result where we can compare the point size here, the point size and the distance. So if the distance is smaller than the point size, that means, ah, okay, a point is, is colliding with our geometry. We can do this with a compare. So feed in the distance and then the point size. So, and then we have to switch the compare to less than. So that means if the distance uh, is less than the point size, that means, okay, a point is colliding. And then we get a result. So we get here a bool value, so a true or false. And uh, we also need the opposite. So let's duplicate this. And switch the operation to greater than. The next part is a bit tricky. Now we have to split our um, array here, our point array depending on those two values. So we split it apart in two different um, arrays, one um, with the points that we have to relax and one with the points that collide so they uh, don't have to relax. Um, we can do this with an erase node. Here, erase um, elements. So let's first make some space, put this behind here. And now we're feeding here the our um, initial array. We need this two times. So, and now we have to decide um, which points to append and, and which not. So we can decide this by um, defining here the count. So if the count is one, it er erases an element. If the count is zero, uh, it don't erases an element. So we can use now here our results here inside of the count. And then the index is, uh, of course, we can use here the index of our iteration collection. So it is inside here. And now, we have one array with the points that we have to relax and one array here, the points that are colliding. So the points that we have to relax can go here into the relax point. And now we have here the, re the, the re relaxed um, points inside an array and here the points that we don't like to relax. So um, when we think about, okay, let's put them together. We can do this with a concatenate. Put them together and we feed them back here into the assembly spline. Um, I made a small mistake um, here in the closest point surface. Um, the maximum distance um, should be a high value. That's uh, because every point needs to know which, where is the closest point on any time. So let's make here a uh, big value. And now back here to our concatenate. And now when we play, we see, let's zoom in, there is a problem. You can see something um, went wrong. This is because we are splitting the points in two arrays and we don't um, put them together in the right order. So we have to decide the right order again. Um, we can do this 
by making a second array with the indices and doing the same erase uh, method on those indices. So let's build a new array. Build and the data type is integers. Remove all of those. And then we have to append the, um, the indices, append elements, array inside here, and the indices is here uh, from the iterate collections, the index. And here, this is our array with the indices inside, and we have to do the same procedure here with the, with the indice array. So, Let's move this stuff a bit down here, then duplicate the erase. I think we can put them straight in. Yeah. Now it switches to an array with integers and also the index and also the count here, the, our result here from the comparison into the count and then also an concatenate here for, uh, for our indices here. And now we have the final array and inside this array, we have the indices in the same order as our points here. Now we have to, whoops, now we have to order the points. So first what we need is an, an array where to write in the ordered values. We use a fill array for this vector is fine. And the length here, the length is the length of our initial array. So we can use here the count value. And now we have to set the values. So we use a set element within our array. And then the index, um, these are our indices are here inside here and here are the positions. So we use an get element for this one and also a get element for this one. And the index is again here from our initial iterate collection index and get element inside here and then the indices here inside the index and our new positions here inside the value. And then this back into our assembly spline. And now let's play it. You can see, uh, let's zoom in here. When it collides, um, it uh, stops uh, relaxing the points. I hope this wasn't too complicated. Now the third part uh, is to project the points onto a surface. This is actually quite easy. So first what we need is a uh, uh, surface. So we are taking here a landscape, make the landscape bigger. So make sure that the landscape is inside our collision shape. And now, um, first we paint a new spline on the surface. So let's go back here to the sketch tool and then activate snapping. And here we use polygons. So it snaps on the polygons of the landscape surface. So we can paint here a new spline. And now we see the points are projected onto the surface. So this is our third spline. Then go back here and replace the old spline. Put in the spline three. Don't need the spline two anymore. Let's go back. And now here in between here, we have to, uh, we like to project every point on the landscape surface. So first we need our landscape. 
here the geometry. Then we iterate over the points, iterate collection. Now we have all points and then we are using again the closest, whoop, closest point on surface. Then it needs again an object. This one here, our landscape, then the position is here, our points here. And now we have the, um, the closest point on the surface. So we can um, put them back in our array. So we can use a set element again, feed in our initial array, and then the index here from the iterate collection and the closest point position now into the value and the array back to the assembly spline. Okay, now let's zoom in. Let's wait a bit. And now you can see it is projected onto the surface and it collides here with the number three. And now for the last part, we like to sweep, to sweep uh, our spline to get a better visualization. So, that's pretty easy. We use a sweep for this. Sweep. Then deactivate caps. And here we need the profile and the path. So the profile we're using a circle. Circle feed in here into the geometry. Oops. Uh, let's go back here and then the tessellation we use uniform and just tessellate it once and then here our path is our spline i think the circle is way too big the best way is to uh, make the same size as the uh, as our here as our point size so you but you can play with it so let's let's make it 10. Then back and now you can see we have here our spline. So and uh, we can smooth it a bit. So it looks a bit nicer and it removes a bit the, the jittery movement. Smooth and also we can subdivide it. So subdivide it first. Make it smooth, subdivision of one is okay. And then inside to the smooth edge, inside here. And now we have a smooth spline. So we put this here so we can see it. Yeah, I think it's a bit too big. Now let's go back, maybe five so yeah that looks a bit better and uh, to colorize it um, we can use a uh, material operator material operator oops let's go back here it is in here back to the scene root and let's build the material dive in here it's a redshift material and then the color we can plug in a gradient or a ramp this into the color maybe use a preset something like this and then let's go back here to the Zeno context and inside the material operator fit in our material. Um, you can, can see it here because it's a redshift material. So we uh, go to the redshift render view.
press play yeah and you can see now we have uh, material on our spline so let's play it okay I hope you liked it. Um, yeah, it was a complex one. And if you have problems or you have questions, let me know in the comments below. And as always, you can download the scene files uh, on Gumroad. Yeah, uh, have a nice day and bye-bye.